To train good physical therapists, everyone agrees that you need good education, excellent education. You need good teachers, you need good courses, and you need good methods. Well, here at Midwestern University, there has been a special study on looking for excellence in physical therapy training, and just how you achieve it, just what is the scope, and I'm going to find out. So my colleagues Jen Furs and Jim Moore and I, through a grant supported by the Academy of Pediatric Physical Therapy, conducted a scoping review of the literature over the last 27 years. You're looking at what is the scope for excellence, is that? Absolutely. We were looking at any evidence in the literature that could lend itself to describe, support, guide us in answering that question, of, what is excellence? Of how to achieve excellence in education. Absolutely. And in fact, the methods you're using and the staff that you have available and the curriculum that you have, these are all important factors that you were looking into in your survey, weren't they? Well, that's actually what we found. So when we went into the evidence and we said, what does the literature say about excellence? In pediatric physical therapy education, what we found was that it really identified three major components, characteristics, um, guides that lead us to excellence. One of those was faculty characteristics, one was curriculum, and one was pedagogy or the methods we use to teach our curriculum. Right, now you need to start then with a good faculty, so you've got to get good people to teach. How, obviously you're looking at the scope, but how is that sort of thing achieved to get the excellence that you need? Well, the literature supports the fact that to have really excellence in pediatric physical therapy education, you need to have access to pediatric physical therapists. So the teachers in some way need to be made up of one or more therapists or people that have experience working with children and their families. I'm detecting a big need for practical experience then. Absolutely, absolutely, hands down. Um, anyone can go to the books and teach the overall content that provides that foundation, but it's really that practical experience, the day-to-day, -day, how do we go about engaging with children? What are the underlying real-life issues about working with children and families? And, and how is really important. I've seen physical therapists in action who have an incredible ability to talk with kids. Now, how do you teach that kind of thing? Well, we have to provide those opportunities. So one of the things that came out in the literature is you must provide hands-on opportunities through not only the ability to work on skills or psychomotor practice with students, but be able to provide them the opportunity to engage with the family members and the kids, to be able to talk with them, to be able to see them in the other places where they are, their homes, their schools, their clinics. Um, so what messages would you give to institutions and individuals involved with achieving excellence about how to do this. What is the scope, in fact? Well, I think the three things that I mentioned before are key. So institutions need to look at their faculty. They need to look at their teachers. Do they have teachers that are prepared to perform research as well as prepared to teach, as well as have experience and practice working with children and families. That's key. So, so that's not an easy thing to do because you have to have clinicians that also have higher levels of education, doctoral pre uh, preparation so that they are ready to move forward and do some of that research. They're ready to take their students to a higher level. You also have to look at your curriculum. There is no one curriculum that has been found in the literature to provide excellence. So universities and institutions can look at the variety of ways on how that can be done. Can it be done through one course, through multiple courses, through integration of content? But among this, how important is the practical hands-on work with students looking at real patients? I believe, Peter, that the most recent literature out there that we discuss in our scoping review really points to the fact that experience, experiential learning, hands-on learning with children and families at the institution, in the clinical setting, and even through service. So even through working with children with disabilities at camps and through helping them on their soccer teams and adaptive sports, all of those things can contribute to this excellence. Thank you very much.